Let's get going with the semi-final Zexalar archetype, those being Galaxy slash Photon slash Cypher, used in Zexal by Kaito and of course in Arc 5, since he was also the only Zexal legacy character in the show, and a certain other branch of Galaxies was used by the 7th Barbarian Emperor, Mizael. Uh, yeah, it's only one boss monster in its evolution, but still it's... It was used, but yeah, this is a rank 8 focused XC spam archetype uh, built around light monsters, so yeah, it was. Uh, it has uh, several monsters which are meta relevant, and yeah, this archetype itself was meta relevant. Uh, some of their uh, monsters were actually also on the ban list due to their overwhelmingly powerful effect, and some of them still are on the ban list to this very day. So let's take a look at them, shall we? We start off with the level 1 Photon Satellite. Once per turn you can target one other Photon monster you control. The levels of the, both the, that monster and this card became, become the combined current levels of those two monsters. Obviously the idea was to use two of these in order to quickly rack up levels and if you have two of these you basically turn them into level 4 monsters for a rank 4 play. And if you basically wait one more turn, if you uh, if you have a third one of them on the field, actually you can turn them into ra rank eights, and basically to, uh, that's what the archetype is based around. However, you generally don't run this because there are so many better options. Yeah, it's a machine dupe target, so you can summon him pretty easily. But the m most relevant usage and the p and the reason why people run this thing is in the is in to run it in a f uh, calculator focus deck in order to get the calculator to a million plus attack points. So yeah, that's that's basically what it is. Next up, we have Kuri Photon. This one has a quick effect that you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard and pay 2000 life points and then you take no damage this turn. If this card is in your graveyard, you can send one photon monster from your hand to the graveyard except Kuri Photon, then add this card from your graveyard to your hand and you can only use this effect once per turn. This is by, by far the most specific uh, protection effect in terms of damage as it requires you to pay 2000 life points and some of you might be confused to why specifically such a huge number of 2000. Well, photons actually uh, are based around having monsters with 2000 attack points or more because they need it for some of their better monsters in order to hit the field. But unlike any other damage cancel uh, cancellator, Scuri Photon stops all damage for the turn, which actually makes him a uh, really interesting and actually the best Kuribo out of the bunch because uh, it does not require uh, any other photon monsters in order to activate its effect. Well, uh, his recycling effect requires a photon monster but you're most likely going to be using this effect only once and then he'll be uh, if you play outside this thing outside of photons you're probably using some other engines to get this thing back into your hand if you really want to. So yeah, run by preference in my opinion. Next up we have Dimension Wanderer. When a monster is banished by the effect of Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard to inflict 3000 damage to your opponent. You can only use this effect once per turn. Yeah, this is actually a pretty fun uh, hand trap to pull off, even though it requires a very specific main deck monster, but trust me, the, that monster is ran at 3 copies in this deck and is generally uh, all, always summoned so you can make uh, make room for this thing so yeah next up we have galaxy eyes cloud dragon and yeah you can tribute this card special summon one galaxy eyes monster from your hand or graveyard except galaxy eyes cloud dragon you can only use this effect once per turn if this card is in the graveyard you can target one galaxy eyes exceeds monster you control attach this card to it as exceeds material you can only use this effect of galaxy eyes cloud dragon once per duel okay so this is a uh, pretty solid card it basically instant uh, equals an instant uh, boss monster of the archetype 
uh, which most of them actually have their own special summoning conditions and, and here we have another one which is also searchable by one for one and not to mention if you have, a, uh, have an Xyz monster which you can actually summon with this effect from the graveyard you can uh, give this thing uh, to it as an Xyz material which is also a nice uh, addition provided that you can't do that because you can only use the, this effect once per duel so yeah uh, Use the second effect when it's absolutely necessary because it can uh, it can uh, provide a certain advantage point uh, due to the fact that the, their rank eights are the best rank eights in the game and are basically ran in, in any rank eight focus build. Next up, we have their final level one Cipher at Ranger. Uh, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can target one Cypher Xyz monster you control, attach this card to it as an Xyz material. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one Cypher spell or trap from your deck to your hand. You can only use one Cypher uh, Ranger effect per turn and only once that turn. It's all, uh, it's all right, I guess. Uh, the archetype has uh, a grand total of three Cypher Xyz uh, monsters and um, all of them are very good and basically worth running and they're pl uh, played in again most uh, rank 8 focus builds because of how they uh, how good they are and yeah uh, the um, the floating effect basically searches out the cypher spell and trap lineup which isn't plentiful but they have some nice uh, additions in uh, in it and the fir the first effect is basically a cloud dragon for uh, a very specific uh, lineup of Xyz monsters, which isn't limited to once per duel because, well, there are only three of them, uh, three Cypher Xyz monsters you can use them on. Alright, next up is a bit of a oddball. It's Galaxy Serpent, which is their only normal monster and, uh, and their only level 2, and it also happens to be a tuner monster for some reason. Which is weird because this archetype is not focused on synchro spamming in the slightest and they don't have a synchro monsters of their own. It's kind of like uh, Shadol Falco who is also a tuner and a fusion focused archetype and, uh, and of course uh, Shadols don't have any synchro monsters to speak of. So yeah, this, be this card is basically ran in synchro as the spam decks along, with, uh, along stuff like Draconet or... Uh, anything uh, anything else that supports uh, low level normal monsters like enchant fi fitting room turbo and yeah usually you don't run this in your in your galaxies next up we have galaxy mirror sage our first level 3 it has a flip effect that lets you gain 500 life points for each galaxy monster in your graveyard and when it's destroyed and sent to the uh, from the field to the graveyard after being flipped face up you can special summon one level 4 or lower galaxy monster from your deck or graveyard in phase down defense position but banish it when it leaves the field uh, yeah this thing actually has a pretty good targets with this uh, with this thing's floating effect but the first effect is really underwhelming. You're not going to get anywhere by gaining life points. I mean, you can recover the losses which your Kuri Photon uh, did by, uh, with its cost of activation. But other than that, it's generally not worth it. Next up, we have Galaxy Worm. When this card is normal summoned while you control no other monsters, you can special summon one level 3 or lower Galaxy effect monster from your deck, but it has its effects negated. If it wasn't with that effect negation clause, I would have called it below decent, since it actually has a one, uh, one only one good target in order to summon with this effect. But uh, generally, it's not worth it. Next up, we have Photon Cerberus. During the turn, this card was normal summon. Neither player can activate trap cards while this card is face up on the field. Okay, it does stop hand traps as well, such as evenly match or impermanence. But other than that, it's it's gutter trash, goodbye. Next up we have Photon Pirate. You can banish one Photon Monster from your graveyard. This card gains 1000 attack until the end of and until the end phase. And you can only use this effect of Photon Pirate up to twice per turn. Uh, yeah, this is actually a pretty fun card to pull off since it's a 3000 attack beat stick that can avoid bottomless. And not to mention that it's not, that it's also immune to level limit area B if if you actually play uh, play a level limit area B lockdown or against it. So there's that. Uh, again, banishing photon mo uh, photon monsters is something that the archetype generally isn't focused on doing that much. So yeah.
Next up we have Photon Lizard. You contribute this card, add one level 4 or lower Photon Monster from your deck to your hand and you can only use this effect once per turn. You basically run three of these because it's one of the best searchers the, arch uh, the archetype has and actually they're the, not that... Uh, they, they don't have many options here so... yeah. Next up we have Photon Saber Tiger. When this card is normal or flipped summoned, you can add one Photon Saber Tiger from your uh, deck to your hand, and if you do not control another Photon Saber Tiger, this card loses 800 attack. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever works for you. I mean, uh, it's basically a prototype sniffing dragon, and that's about it. And, I mean... It's our first 2000 attack monster, which uh, will be the general stat line uh, for the mo for the monsters and the main gimmick of the monsters as as soon as we g get going properly. But other than that, yeah, it also loses 800 attack if you don't control another one of them, which is beyond confusing. So yeah, don't bother with this one. Next up, we have oh boy, uh, Cipher Soldier. Yeah, I, I, you bet. Uh, you you didn't uh, you weren't expecting this one. Well, technically he's part of the archetype, so I'll be reviewing him as such. If this guy, uh, if this thing battles a warrior type monster during damage calculation, this card gains 2,000 attack and defense during that damage calculation only. It basically becomes a a, a monster that's uh, stronger than shooting star dragon if it battles a warrior monster, and yeah, that's all it does. I mean, you can also boost it with uh, limiter removal as well. And also it's an earth monster and an archetype dominated by light monsters, so... Don't bother with this one. Oh, you thought this guy was weird? Then we next up we have Storm Cypher, which is our first level 4 and also happens to be a dark Cybers monster. Emphasis on that, with 2400 attack. Alright. Cannot attack directly or attack monsters in the extra monster zone. Unaffected by monster effects activated in the extra monster zone and cannot be destroyed by battle with monsters in the extra monster zone. Extra this, extra that, extra monster zone gets mentioned way, way too many times here. Yeah, it's a normal summonable level 4 which cannot attack uh, directly or attack basically any extra deck monsters. Which is a which is a, a gimmicky card if I ever saw one and no don't run it. All right, mo moving on to the, to our proper lineup, we have Cipher Mirror Knight. When, when a Cipher monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the, uh, and sent to your graveyard, you can discard this card, send one card from your uh, from your hand or field to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon the destroyed monster. During the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can add one Cypher card from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Cypher Mirror Knight once per turn. It's basically a hand trap that uh, can recycle your fall, uh, fallen Cypher monsters, which are mostly gonna be Xyz monsters. It's effect when it's discarded, you can basically send an, a Tranger to the graveyard in order to get him in, uh, as an Xyz material onto a monster you revived. And not to mention you get, uh, get a search of the entire Cypher lineup, which is always a plus in my book. You tend to run uh, lots of Cypher Xyz monsters, so two to three of these are, are usually fine. Next up in the Cypher lineup, we have Cypher Twin Raptor. If your opponent controls a face-up monster that was special summoned from the extra deck and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can discard one card, special summon one cypher monster from your hand or deck. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of its turn except cypher monsters. You can only use this effect of cypher, uh, cypher twin raptor once per turn. It's an okay special summoning condition. It can special summon a certain other monster we'll get to in a second and then uh, which also has a uh, special summoning condition which can basically in instant in an equal uh, in an instant exceeds monster so it's uh, all right uh, I wouldn't advise maxing out on it because its special summoning condition to start this combo off is a bit too specific so yeah but then again you're most likely go going to be staring into a formidable extra deck board when you uh, go to your turn, so I guess you can uh, maybe add an additional one just for the flavor. Alright, next up, we, I believe, is the final Cypher card, that being Cypher Wing. Uh, 
this is another level 4 and which has the effect that if you control a cypher monster you can special summon this card from your hand and you contribute it to increase the levels of all cypher monsters you control by 4 until the end of this turn. It basically turns all your cypher monsters into level 8s which uh, you would tend to go into a rank 8 place which the archetype is of course based around and you basically run 3 of these because uh, normal summoning this and then special summoning two more of these which is very easily to do since the uh, since you can very easily search them out can uh, equal in an instant uh, link three or rank eight so yeah next up we have the newest piece of support star leash dragon say uh, effect then this is another level four dragon and you can uh, send any number of dragon monsters from your hand or from face up from the field to the graveyard to add one dragon monster from your deck to your hand whose levels equal the total original levels of the mo monster sent to the graveyard you can banish this card from your graveyard and target one level eight or a light or dark dragon monster in your graveyard add it to your hand you can only use this if, uh, each if, uh, effect of star leash dragon once per turn yeah, this is uh, one bit of an oddball since you uh, since you don't run many dragons in your uh, ar main deck arsenal, and not to mention you don't even run any dark monsters. So this basically was made more of a support for chaos builds, if anything. Uh, you only run Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon the most, and at three copies. So yeah, I guess running one f uh, for style points could be viable. Maybe yeah, I am. Um, if you're uh, if you're planning to uh, win duels, I wouldn't ru advise ra running any more than one of these. Next up, we have Numeral Hunter. Yay! If this card is uh, summoned, return all number XCs monsters on the field to the extra deck. Neither player can special summon number XCs monsters, cannot be destroyed by battle with an XCs monster, and this card is unaffected by the effects of XCs monsters. Oh, well, it can blow back an, an opponent's Utopia the Lightning or anything else that has a number in it. I mean, yeah, obviously it's the you, uh, the user avatar type of card such as uh, Kaiba Man, Lord of the uh, Divine Gods, Zero King God, Reiji. Uh, it's still a fantastic name. But yeah, this one is specifically made to kill number XCs monsters, which are a bit too far off in between in terms of meta relevance. Like, the only one relevant one I can think of that is currently legal to play is Utopia, the Lightning. But keep in mind that this also returns your own number monsters into the extra deck, which the Arctab has plenty of, actually. So, yeah, watch, watch with the ratios in that case. Next up, we have Kaito's Faithful Companion for Orbital 8. When this card is flipped face up, place one You Got It boss counter on, uh, on it, and you can remove all You Got It boss counters on, on this card. Its attack becomes 2000, and after the, uh, and after you change this card's attack with this effect, it cannot attack your opponent directly for the rest of this turn, and it's sent to the graveyard during the end phase. And you can all, uh, attribute this card to the target one Photon or Galaxy monster in your graveyard, add that target to the hand. Now I can't remember if I actually talked about this card in the uh, Super Defense Robot analysis. My memory doesn't serve me right, but anyway, yeah, this is uh, a machine dupable uh, searcher for photons or galaxies, which is fine. You can also make this thing's attack become 2000, which is the prime stat of this archetype if you're going into uh, the bigger boss monsters. So I guess you can run it if you feel like it yeah let's check out his evolution that being photon orbital during your main phase you can target one photon or galaxy monster you control equip that this monster from your hand or field to that target it gains 500 attack also it cannot be destroyed by a battle you can send this equip card to the graveyard add one photon or galaxy monster from your deck to your hand except photon orbital you can only use this effect of photon orbital once per turn I guess it's also fine. It basically, uh, it's a different flavor of or Orbital Seven, and it's just that. It's a um, uh, it's a gimmicky ser searching option in, in in both those cases, and it's ne it was never anything more than that. So yeah, just run freaking Photon Lizard. Next up, we have Lilybot, another one of the in the weird territory. 
and this card is normal summoned or fully face up you can target one orbital seven in your graveyard special summon that target in face up attack position or face down defense position for some reason and once per turn you contribute any number of machine monsters special summon an equal number of Orton or galaxy monsters from your hand um, you can build insane boards with this thing, but it still requires a bit too much setup. Uh, there's a certain spell card that can help out with this, but we'll get to it later, which can also be a bit inconsistent. So yeah, mm, run by preference, all three of these in my opinion. Next up we're going on, uh, go back to the good territory, with Photon Thrasher. Cannot be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned from your hand while you control no monsters. Cannot attack if you control another monster. Yeah, the, this uh, doesn't tend to really be a problem, since this thing is basically a three-off in, uh, in basically any kind of warrior uh, Link-centric build. Even the uh, elemental heroes used to run this thing, and they still do. Because it's a free monster on turn one, and it basically enables a ton of plays uh, when comboed with so many other stuff. Absolutely max out on this guy. Next up, we have Photon Crusher. If this card attacks, it is changed to defense position at the end of the damage step, and that's it. Nothing, ma uh, nothing else. You basically run this thing because it's a 2,000 attack monster, and if you really feel like it. Oh, and even weirder is Photon Charge, man. Once per turn, you can make this thing's at uh, this card's attack become uh, double its original attack until your ne next standby phase, and this thing cannot attack the turn you activate this effect. Again, you use this because you want to summon Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon, and that's it. Moving on. Next up, we have Photon Circle, which halves all battle damage from battles involving it. Yeah, it doesn't even have 2,000 attack points, so not worth it. Next up, we have Photon Advancer. If a Photon monster is on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can special, uh, you can only special summon Photon Advancer once per turn this way, and gains 1,000 attack points if another Photon monster is on the field. Obviously, it's uh, also a nice two to three off staple because you special summon Photon Thrasher, special summon this, special summon uh, Galaxy Ice uh, Photon Dragon. Simple and easy. You can also uh, use this th thing as a link material uh, if you want to ma manage to build your board with other photon monsters with, with their other special summoning conditions. Yeah, simple and easy. Yeah, um, definitely worth running at, uh, at two or three. Next up, we have Photon Vanisher. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must first be special summoned from your hand while you, uh, while you control a photon or galaxy monster and cannot attack the turn it is special summoned. You can only special summon photon vanisher once per turn this way. If this card is special summoned, you can add one galaxy eyes photon dragon from your deck to your hand and an Xyz monster that was special summoned using this card uh, on the field as material gains this effect. Banish any monster destroyed by battle with this thing's effect. Obviously, they also wanted you, you to run uh, three of these at all times because, uh, again, special summon Photon Thrasher, special summon this, and you get to even search the Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon as this thing wasn't uh, nice to you already. And not to mention if you ha happen to make this thing a level 8 or uh, you use it as one of the rank 4 uh, monsters' materials, you can basically turn... Uh, you can basically turn your fo Photon Xyz monsters into DD Warrior, ladies. It's just that great. Absolutely max out on this guy. Next up we have Galaxy Cleric. Now we're moving on to the Galaxy lineup. And Galaxy Cleric has this effect. If this card is in your hand, you can target one Photon or Galaxy Xyz monster you control. Attach this card to it as a, as a material. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can target five Photon and or Galaxy cards with different names in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck, then draw two cards. You can only use one uh, uh, Galaxy Cleric effect per turn, and only once that turn. It's an archetypal overlay regen, an archetypal pot of avarice, and yeah. It's overall a very nice card. What else can I say? Of course, you can only use one of these effects per turn and only once that turn. It's completely reasonable for this kind of utility it offers. It's just amazing. Next up, we have another state three of staple, that being Galaxy Wizard. Once per turn, you can increase this card's level by four until the end phase, and you contribute this card to add one Galaxy card from your deck to your hand, except itself. The search effect is again uh, the the best thing about this card since the photon lizard also attributes itself in order to perform a search, and not to mention this thing can make itself a level eight for level rank eight spamming. Three of staple is how you want to do it, and you never think about running any less of these. 
What you don't want to run is Galaxy Dragon. This card cannot attack directly and can only attack Dragon type monsters. And if this card battles a Dragon type monster, this card gains 1000 attack during the damage step only. Also, that monster has its effects negated during the battle phase, as long as this card remains on the field. Um, I mean, you can, with DNA surgery, turn this thing into a 3000 attack normal summonable beat stick, but yeah, that basically uh, is how you play this deck, you basically build your deck around this thing, so no thank you. Next up we have Galaxy Soldier, which is our first level 5. You can send one other light monster from your hand to the graveyard, special summon this card from your hand in defense position. When this card is special summon, you can add one Galaxy monster from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. Just run three of these, you are allowed to send any light monster from your ha hand to the graveyard, which opens up splash ability options. And not to mention that uh, when this thing uh, gets special summon, you get to add a Galaxy monster from your deck to your hand. You run three of these for a reason. Next up we have Photon Slasher. If a face-up exceeds what the monster is on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand in face-up defense position. Free materials, to, uh, 2000 uh, and above monster for, uh, for Galaxy Eyes, simple and easy. You, you tend to uh, usually max out on this one. And that was their last level 5, let's move on to their only level 6, Photon Leo. When this card is normal summon, you can have your opponent shuffle their entire hand into the deck, then they draw uh, the same number of cards as they shuffled into the deck. Um, ultimately, not that uh, impressive, uh, unless you're playing against like Bujins or something, but you can actually uh, get a, a pretty dis a decent stun on your opponent if you have something like a Droll and Lockboard or, or the Protector of the Sanctuary or... Uh, you, or you can also combo it well with Trickstar Reincarnation, but yeah, it's basically a gimmicky effect which you usually tend to have very specific counters for, so uh, yeah, it has 2000 and above attack, but not worth it in my opinion in a dedicated Galaxy deck. Next up we have their only level 7, Photon Wyvern. When this card is normal or flip summon, destroy all set cards your opponent controls. Again, it, you need to specifically tribute summon this in order to uh, activate its effect or summon it will via, I don't know, shallow grave or something from the graveyard. And then flip it face up in order to destroy all set cards your opponent controls, which are barely existent since uh, the back row tends to be face up and activated these days. Uh, I guess you can run uh, uh, run a couple of these beca because of a certain monster. Well, I'll, I'll get into that later, so I won't spoil the fun to some uh, people who are new to this uh, side of the channel. Next up we have Galaxy Knight, our first level 8. If you control a Photon or Galaxy monster, you can normal summon this card without tributing. If summoned this way, target one Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon in your graveyard if possible. Regardless, this card loses 1000 attack and if it does, special summon that uh, uh, that monster, uh, if any, in defense position. The attack decrease lasts until the end of uh, this turn. Yeah, if you happen to <coughs> have a level 8 monster such as, I don't know, uh, Galaxy Wizard already on the field, you have a normal summon remaining and you have a Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon, it's basically a 3 material uh, rank 8 monster, which we'll get into uh, later. Also it can prove uh, to be a decent link material, so everything uh, checks out here and yeah, usually run to two, uh, to 2 or 3 of these. Next up we have Galaxy Brave. If this card is in your hand, you can reveal one Photon monster in your hand, special summon this, and if you do, its level becomes the level of that Photon monster. If, if this card is normal or special summon, you can target one galaxy monster in your graveyard, then this attacks, uh, attack and defense become that monster's attack and defense, and you can only use each effect once per turn. Uh, this basically incentivizes you that you focus on, well, you'd actually want to uh, get level 8 photons uh, onto the board here, but photons don't have any level 8s, which is kind of depressing since you basically want to have this thing hit the field when it's level 8 form, so you basically have to rely on stuff like Forbidden Chalice or Skill Drain in order to um, have this card level, um, be level 8. Still, it can provide to be a decent, decent link material, and basically if you pair it up with a level 4 photon monster, it can turn into a level 4 for rank 4 plays, so uh, run one or two of these in my opinion then. Next up we have Galaxy Tyranno. 
And when a galaxy monster you control is the targeted for an attack, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position, and when summoned this way, you can immediately after this effect resolves, Xyz summon one galaxy Xyz monster using only galaxy monsters you control. Uh, it's basically pretty alright. Uh, it basically e equals an instant uh, rank 8 uh, uh, Xyz monster, provided you, are, uh, you have uh, the appropriate setup in order to make it. You usually tend to go into cipher monsters uh, with this thing's effect, or the three material uh, exceeds monster if you have the appropriate setup to make it. So yeah, one or two of these is usually fine. Next up we have Photon Caesar. If this card is normal or flip summon, you can special summon one Photon Caesar from your hand or deck. You specifically need to normal or uh, you need to specifically tribute summon this thing in order to get its effect off, which makes it barely worth running. Next up we have the prime boss monster of the archetype in the main deck, which we've mentioned quite a few times, the ever, the ever so titular Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. The ace monster, uh, the rival ace monster of Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal. You can special summon this card from your hand by tributing two monsters with 2000 or more attack. During the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, quick effect, you can target that opponent's monster, banish both this card and, uh, from the field and that target. Return those banished monsters to the field at the end of the battle phase. And if you banish an Xyz monster, this card gains 500 attack for each material that the, that the monster had when you uh, banished it. So yeah, it's a pretty fun effect to pull off and basically the photons are kind of like a, an anti Xyz uh, spammy deck, so yeah, you can actually uh, get some uh, tops here and there against Xyz focused decks such as... Hmm, I can't really think of much, uh, much of uh, Xyz spammy decks uh, which are played in the here in the rain, Reigns era which is coming to an end since Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 is on the way. But yeah, back in the day this used to be a, uh, and well still is, a very popular card and very popular boss monster since you can basically get rid of any monster, any problem monster at the time and since it's uh, basically a non-destruction, non-targeting removal at the cost of uh, getting that monster back during the end phase. Uh, if you actually can provide a certain, like, a lock so you, don't, so you can prevent the monster from coming back to your opponent's side of the field, this, can, this card can be a blast to pull off, so... Yeah. Alright, now moving on to their extra deck. Oh, wait! We don't! We have another main deck monster, that being Paladin of Photon Dragon, a level 4 ritual monster. You can ritual summon it with a luminous dragon ritual, then you can tribute this card to special summon one galaxy eyes photon dragon from your hand or deck, and when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, sends it to the graveyard, draw one card. It's Paladin of White Dragon, but miles better, because Paladin of White Dragon, when, spe when it special summons a Blue Eyes monster, it prevents Blue Eyes monsters from attacking for that turn. Not only does this uh, not uh, prevent the Galaxy Eyes from attacking, but also if you happen to attack with it, uh, you get to draw a card, which is uh, much better than the Paladin of White Dragon's effect, which had the effect of instantly pop defense position monsters, which is beyond outdated now in the Link era, so... Yeah. Now for its Ritual spell, Luminous Dragon Ritual, which is used to summon Paladin of Photon Dragon, you must tribute um, a monsters whose level equal exactly 4, and you can also banish this card from your graveyard to banish monsters from your graveyard to basically perform a ritual summon of the Paladin of uh, Photon Dragon from the graveyard. So yeah, that's uh, basically a ritual spell done right for a very random monster that even appeared in the anime, so yeah. If you really feel like it, go on, go ahead and run, run, run a few of these, and yeah. Now moving on to their extra deck, first up we have the Star Leash Paladynamo. This one requires two level 4 light monsters, it's a rank 4 with 2000 attack, and once per turn you can detach two Xyz materials from this card and target one face-up monster your opponent controls, change its attack to zero, and if you do, but it has its effects negated. If this card you control is destroyed by an opponent's card or by, by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, draw one card. 
Uh, yeah, it uses both XT's materials, which I am beyond disappointed about. Like I pointed out many times in the past, I absolutely don't like the concept of monsters using all of its XT's materials at once, meaning that its effects will only be able uh, to be used once, unless you have a way to recover said materials. But not only is this really good, and it has basically been played in many light decks ever since it came out, because... Not only does it permanently reduce the attack uh, attack to zero and permanently negate the effects of monsters, although uh, good luck if the monster can't be targeted, but also if you happen to lose it, you basically get a plus out of it, which is really good. Run a few copies if you feel like it. Their next monster is Star Liege Lord Galaxion. This one requires specifically two level 4 photon monsters, and once per turn you can detach one or two XC's materials from this card to apply the, the effect depending on the number you detached. 1. Special summon one Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon from your hand, or 2. Special summon one Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon from your deck. I bet the archetype at specific intervals is actively trying to mock Blue Eyes because it's way more consistent than that archetype and not to mention that this is basically a free 3000 attack beat stick however you look at it on a condition which is piss easy to achieve just two fo uh, two low four photons thrasher and vanisher and then you get a the dd warrior lady monster which can special summon you a 3000 attack beat stick you basically run two to three of these goodbye next up we have star leash photon blast dragon Requires two level four monsters, and if this card is exceed summon, you can special summon one photon monster from your hand. And while it is, when while this exceed summon monsters on the field, your opponent cannot target monsters you control with two thousand or more attack with card effects. Also, they cannot be destroyed by the opponent's card effects. Once per um, per opponent's turn, quick effect, you can detach one material from this card and target one your, uh, one of your Galaxy Eyes photon dragon that is banished or in your graveyard. Special summon it. It's also a free 3000 attack beat stick, but this one works specifically on the graveyard and I was mm, uh, surprised that uh, Galaxion didn't fetch it with one of its uh, one or two material def uh, detach effects. And yeah, this the thing doesn't have 2000 attack itself, so it's a bit on the weirder side, but it has a Gargantuan 2500 defense for a lower rank 4 monster, so I guess running one couldn't hurt. Preferably, maybe. Next up, we have Galaxy Stealth Dragon, which is their last rank 4. Requires two level 4 dragon type monsters specifically, and once per turn, you can detach one XC's material from this uh, card, special summon one dra dragon type monster from your hand. Also, your opponent cannot target other galaxy cards you control with card effects, and those cards cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effect. So basically, it allows you to special summon any dragon type monster from your hand, which is absolutely lovely. And it also protects other galaxy cards, not just monsters, from being targeted or destroyed by card effects. So, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. But the main iffy thing about this thing is the summoning condition, which specifically states for two dragon type monsters. Which archetype didn't, uh, which the archetype didn't have for a very long time. It's only a dragon monster up until then was Galaxy Dragon, which, which was a level four, which absolutely no one in their right mind uh, even ran. So the only relevant choice uh, for this to go into right now is via Starly Dragon Seyfert. So, yeah, if you you basically this is basically why you run three Seyfert if you want if you want to go into this thing. Alright, now next up is a notorious monster, that being number 42, Galaxy Tomahawk. This is a rank 7 monster with 0 attack and 3000 defense. It requires 2 level 7 monsters. And once per turn you can detach 2 XC's materials from this card. Special summon as many Battle Eagle tokens, machine type wind level 6 to attack 2000 defense 0 as possible, but destroy them during the end phase of this turn. Also your opponent takes no further damage, uh, battle damage this turn. Yeah, this guy, uh, it should be pretty familiar by now, is the outright banned. Well, I mean, it was banned 2 formats ago, but it was, it was a long time coming. The number 42 is uh, definitely one of the most notorious uh, uh, OTK and uh, extra deck spammers uh, out there and they basically it was a matter of time before it got banned. It's the only rank 7 in the archetype and the only way in the archetype it, uh, you can summon it is via two photon wyverns which hurts a bit to be honest but there are other 
uh, level 7 splashable monsters which can easily make this thing uh, go to work and without even losing your normal summon. And yeah, absolutely worth running if it ever comes off the ban list. It's just that good. It also proves why rank 7 is one of the best ranks in the game, while uh, right now it ranks to rank 4. Next up we have on our first rank 8, number 38, Hope Harbinger Dragon Titanic Galaxy. God, I love that name. Requires two level 8 monsters and once per turn during either player's turn when a spell card or effect is activated on the field, you can negate that effect and if you do, attach that card to this card as XC's material. And when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can detach one XC's material from this card, change the, uh, the attack target to this card and perform the damage calculation. If a face-up card, um, if a card uh, XC's monster you control is destroyed by battle or, uh, or a card effect, you can target one face-up Xyz monster you control, it gains attack equal to one, to one of those destroyed monsters' original attack. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is basically one of the best uh, rank 8 monsters you can actually go into. It's archetype and it's basically played in any rank 8 focused uh, deck because it's just that good. Negating spells or effects uh, that activate on the field is a huge deal since, well, any, um, uh, since uh, it can negate your opponent's crucial move in the in his OTK strategy and basically loses that card permanently as it this thing attaches itself onto it as a, as material so yeah and not to mention that the attack uh, gaining effect is also permanent so you can also get some pretty high attack values with this thing absolutely worth running next up we have Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragon well, our first cypher monster it requires two level 8 monsters, and once per turn you can detach one Xyz material from this card and target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Monsters you control cannot attack your opponent directly for the rest of this turn except this card. Also take control of the selected monster until the end phase. But while this uh, effect is applied, it has its effects negated, its attack becomes 3000 and its name becomes Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragon. Yeah, this is uh, this is the, uh, basically the reason why ciphers are uh, so ran in basically any uh, any deck that that can make them and, and and including their own archetype because it's fantastic. It steals an opponent's monster, makes its name Galaxy Eye Cipher Dragon, makes its attack 3,000, so it can be a beat over basically anything. You can use them as link materials so that the, the opponent doesn't get the monster back. It's so fun simple and easy and very much well worth your time next up we have number 62 galaxy eyes prime photon dragon this one also requires two level eight monsters and in this card battles during damage calculation quick effect you can attach one material from this card once per battle this card gains attack equal to the combined ranks of all xyz monsters currently on the uh, field and uh, times 200 of course and during the damage calculation only and if this card in its own control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect while it had galaxy eyes photon dragon as xyz material uh, you can special summon this card during the second standby phase after this card's activation and if you do double its attack any battle damage this card inflicts to your opponent is halved unless it has galaxy eyes photon dragon as xyz material is basically a very fat da a damage enabler and for all intents and purposes it also is a very decent rank 8 to go into even though it halves all damage it does unless it has galaxy eyes photon dragon under it which is very easy to do it's, it has a very simple special summoning conditions it can uh, detach a material to make it uh, make itself beat even harder so yeah you uh, also another absolute staple in the archetype Next up we have Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Photon Dragon. This one requires three level 8 monsters and you can also XC summon it by using a Galaxy Eyes XC's monster you control as material, except himself. Transfer the materials and once per turn you can target uh, up to two equip cards equipped to this card, attach them to this card as XC's material. And once per turn you can detach one XC's material from this card to target one face up card your opponent controls, destroy it. I honestly love this thing because you're first of all you're uh, able to summon it piss, piss easy by just using a, a galaxy as a rank 8 monster you control as material and not to mention you can pop a card uh, if you detach a material and the equip effect is completely pointless because the archetype actually does not have a single equip card uh, in itself so that part of the effect might as not well exist 
and it's also one of the most specific ways you can actually restore Rexy's materials uh, so yeah there's a certain monster uh, later I'll mention which can combo well with this thing if they executed it right but yeah we'll get to that a little bit later and n and now we move on to another branch of galaxy eyes that being number 107 galaxy eyes tachyon dragon requires two level eight monsters and once per battle phase at the start of your battle phase you can detach one material from this card all other face up monsters you currently uh, currently on the field have their effects negated also um, uh, on the, their attack and defense become their original attack and defense and if you do any of the, uh, these during the battle phase this turn, each time your opponent, uh, ac uh, opponent's card in, uh, effect resolves, this card gains 1000 attack until the end of the battle phase. Also, you can ma it can make a second attack during the each battle phase uh, this turn. It's alright. It's basically You basically run this because of the few support cards that actually can combo well with him and, well, basically other galaxy monsters. And you also... Uh, mostly run this because of, because of its chaos version which we'll get into later which is an absolute beast of a monster and it actually goes off and yeah this thing actually sees play in dragon made decks along with its chaos version uh, which we'll get into later because it can uh, be, because it can turn them into an even more powerful beatdown deck so yeah run by preference in my opinion next up we have number 90 galaxy eyes photon lord uh, it's a warrior monster this time around and it requires also two level 8 monsters has reverse stats of photon dragon and if this card has a photon card as exceeds material it cannot be destroyed by battle or ca it cannot be destroyed by card effects sorry and you can only use the following uh, each of the following effects of photon lord once per turn uh, um, uh, once per turn of course and uh, when an opponent's monster activates its effect, quick effect, you can detach one material from this card, negate that the monster's effect, and if they activate, uh, if they detach, uh, and if the detached material was a galaxy card, sorry, the effect is really tiny. I have to really focus. Uh, destroy that card during your opponent's uh, turn. Quick effect, you can take one photon or galaxy card from your deck and either add it to your hand or attach to this, uh, attach it to this card as exceeds material. This card was actually on the ban list for uh, around two formats, I believe, because of its uh, card de card destruction effect was actually pretty handy, and it uh, basically helped shut down multi a multitude of decks, and that's why it was actually very, uh, ran very rampantly ba uh, back then. Nowadays, it's really it's still good. It can provide a decent matchup and a handy removal effect. So yeah, running it is usually very advisable. Next up, we move on to the rank 9 uh, part of the deck. Well, first of which, we start off with Galaxy Eyes Cypher Blade Dragon. This one requires 3 level 9 monsters. And you can also Xyz summon this card by using a rank 8 or Galaxy Eyes Xyz monster you control as material and transfer its materials to this card. And it also cannot be used as, a, uh, as an... Uh, uh, as an uh, as material as a, for an Xyz summon, and once per turn you can detach one material from this card, then target one card on the field, destroy it. If this Xyz summon card you control is destroyed by battle or uh, or with the uh, m or by battle with an opponent's m monster, attacking monster or destroyed an opponent's uh, card effect and uh, sent to your graveyard, Jesus, you can target one Galaxy Eye Cipher Dragon in your graveyard, special summon it. Yeah. It's it's a very good effect. You usually tend to uh, summon it the same way like you do with all your other monsters. And yeah, this one also combos well with the full armor photon dragon since you ba basically get two pops per turn. So uh, anyway, it's a uh, it's an all it's an all right card and pretty much w w w ran because of the, uh, its handy pop effect and also it can. Revive a Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon. You usually summon Cypher Dragon, go into full armor, and go into this thing. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. And you can use Galaxy Eyes, the which you uh, which this thing revived, or you know you can just go straight into it to summon Neo Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragon, which also requires three level nine monsters. And if this card has a Cypher card as Xyz material, it gains this effect. Once per turn, you can detach up to three Xyz materials from this card. Monsters you control cannot attack your opponent directly for the rest of this turn except this card. Also, for each material detached, take control of one of the opponent's mon uh, face-up monsters until the end of the uh, until the end phase. Uh, 
But while this effect is applied, they have their effects negated, their attack become 4500, and also their name become Neo Galaxy Eyes. Yeah, basically I was straight upgrade over Cypher Dragon in terms of how, you're, uh, how you can also use this effect as link material, uh, and uh, as straight up attackers, like it was used in the anime, so yeah. Uh, you, ba you basically also run one or two of these. Next up we have Neo Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Uh, this one is uh, rank 8, sorry. Uh, I should have looked at it before. Uh, before we went into the rank 9 lineup. And if this ca card is Xyz summoned using a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon as one of its materials, all other face-up uh, cards cur uh, currently on the field have their effects negated. Once per turn you can detach one material from this card, detach all materials from all Xyz monsters, uh, from all Xyz monsters your opponent controls, and this card gains 500 attack for each. Yeah, it, and it can attack up to that many times during each ba during each battle phase this turn. Yeah, this is all. This is basically a game ender and OTK enabler under uh, under right conditions, as it, as it can flat out shut down the entire field and can attack multiple times. And yeah, we're not done with the multiple attackers just yet. So yeah, very nice card indeed, and. Uh, but the the, the biggest b bummer it has it requires three level eight monsters and none of these effects can be pulled off consistently if they don't have the original photon under it. So yeah, it requires a, a, a bit of work, but certainly worth it. And I'm sorry that I um, I, I there was a bit of a uh, th there was a bit of ordering mistake. I was supposed to look at that after. Photon Lord and then go into Cypher Blade and Neo Galaxy Eyes for Cypher Dragon, but eh, mistakes are made every day, I guess. Alright, now let's go on to their final two rank nines. First of which is number 95 Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon. Requires three level nine monsters, and you can also Xyz summon this card by using a Galaxy Eyes Xyz monster you control as the Xyz material, and Xyz materials are transferred. Cannot be used as an Xyz material for an Xyz summon. And when this card is Xyz summoned, you can send three dragon monsters with different names from your deck to the graveyard, and your opponent uh, banishes three monsters from their deck. You can detach one material from this card. This card can make up to two attacks on monsters during, uh, during each battle phase this turn. Yeah, this is another monster that is currently banned due to the, um, due to the fact that it can uh, provide free graveyard setup for literally any dragon based deck. It it can operate in. Not to mention it's a 4k beat stick which can attack twice. Simple and easy to summon. What else can I say? They'll run this run this all the time if you if it ever comes off the ban list. And their final Xyz monster is the Chaos number 107 Neo Galaxy Ice Tachyon Dragon. Requires three level nine monsters, and once per turn you can detach one material from this card. Until the end of this turn, negate the effects of all other face-up cards that are currently on the field. Also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects on the field. If this card has number 107 and then Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon as Xyz material, it gains this effect. You can tribute two monsters. This card can make up to three attacks uh, on monsters during each battle phase this turn. This card came, uh, came uh, like two years before uh, Neo, uh, Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon and it's miles better, uh, honestly. Flat out entire shutdown on the entire field, the opponent cannot do jack or shit and if it has the original uh, 107 under it, you can ma basically tribute three monsters in order to uh, give this thing a, a triple attacking effect which is piss easy to do in Dragon Maid decks, and that's why basically you run uh, this thing, the original number 107, and Draglubion inside it. Yeah, it's an OTK enabler, and yeah, it's uh, very much w well worth your time. Now moving on to the Link Monsters, the, the, the duo that m made them tick even better. First of which is Galaxy Eyes Soul Flare Dragon, this one is a Link 2 with 2000 attack, which points bottom left and bottom right, requires two light monsters, including a monster with 2000 or more attack. And if this card is Link Summon, you can target one Photon or Galaxy monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. During your opponent's main phase quick effect, you can discard one Photon card and one Galaxy card, 
or uh, or discard one Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon, then target one special summon monster your opponent controls, destroy it, and you can only use its effect once per turn. Yeah, it basically is a 2000 attack monster for Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon. If you happen to, to discard him or uh, go the harder route and discard any Galaxy and any Photon monster, you get to pop a special summon monster, which can b b basically be very good play interruption, which is always b welcome in my book. Basically, you you usually start your plays with the uh, with this guy and then go uh, go from there. Next up, we have the final link monster, Galaxy Satellite Dragon. This one's another link too with the same stats as the Soul Flare Dragon. Points bottom left and bottom right. Requires two dragon monsters. And during the battle phase, quick effect, you can banish this card from your hand, from your field or graveyard. Then target one number exceeds monster you control that was originally a light dragon. Until the end of the battle phase, any battle damage your opponent takes is halved. Also, that monster's attack becomes equal to that uh, to the number of uh, in its name times 100. You know, during your opponent's end phase, you can choose one card in your deck and place it on the top of the deck. You can only use each effect of the Galaxy Eye Satellite Dragon once per turn. This guy is very interesting because you can uh, you you can actually um, build a very powerful deck with with number monsters uh, with it because yeah it was it was I believe made to specifically uh, uh, it was made to specifically support number monsters also uh, you can basically uh, turn chaos number 107 into a massive beat stick uh, as you can uh, give him a good 10,000 attack points which is uh, uh, always a nice book, which can attack then three times at the cost of uh, the opponent taking half the battle damage, which is still enough for an OTK. You basically build your the entire deck around this thing and uh, uh, and Neo Tachyon, which is yeah one of the best ways you can actually play the deck, in my opinion. And the last monster is actually a fusion monster, that being Twin Photon Lizard. Requires two photon monsters as materials, and you contribute this card to special summon from your graveyard, both of the fusion materials used for its fusion summon. I mean, it's fine, it's nothing too special, and yeah, if you really crave for it, you can p uh, put a copy in your extra deck, but uh, generally I wouldn't recommend it. It's a bit too slow for my taste. And next up, we will we'll go on to their uh, back row. First up, on which we have Axelite. If you control no monsters, you can special summon one level 4 or lower photon or galaxy monster from your deck. Then you can only activate one, one Axelite per turn. And you can only normal summon or set during. And you cannot normal summon or set during the turn you activate this card. It's a worse a hero lives, in my opinion, as you're then stri strictly restricted into special summoning to make your plays which makes it run, uh, run worth running at 1 max. Next up we have Galactic Charity. If you control a gal Galaxy Xyz monster, discard one card and draw two cards. And also if you activate this card, any damage your opponent takes for the rest of this turn is halved. You can only activate one Galactic Charity per turn. It's not bad, it's just... I wish it wasn't for that damage halving effect because... Well, the opponent can't live with uh, you drawing a card and discarding one, so yeah. I guess you can run two or, uh, two or three of these. Next up we have Galaxy Cyclone. Target one set spell or trap uh, or a card on the field, destroy it. During your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard and target one face up spell or trap on the field and destroy it. You can only use this effect of Galaxy Cyclone once per turn. Or don't be an idiot and run MST or Twin Twister, goodbye. Next up we have Galaxy Storm, a quick play. Target one face up Xyz monster on the field it has no, that has no Xyz materials, destroy that target. Uh, there are miles better uh, monster removal effects in the game and this is certainly not one of them, so... Yeah, unless you cleared, it um, uh, cleared him out with Photon Dragon, it doesn't amount to much. Next up we have Galaxy Trans. Pay 2000 life points. Then target one Photon Monster in your graveyard special summon it. Both it and one Galaxy Monster from your deck with the same level, both in defense position. And if you do, each monster's attack becomes 2000. Also their effects are negated and you can only activate one Galaxy Trans per turn. You cannot normal or special summon monsters the turn you activate this card except Photon and Galaxy Monsters. 
it's very nice. It's a very nice setup for link plays, Xyz plays, any plays you uh, plan to play. If you're um, if you have uh, enough galaxy and photon monsters in order to spare, so play uh, some plays because, well, uh, it, you you can it can cost you a game if you don't have the appropriate setup to continue on since it locks you into galaxies and uh, photons for the turn. You usually run the one or two of these. Next up we have Galaxy Wave, a continuous, which says that each time you exceed summon you get to inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent. Um, no. Just... no, I'm not gonna elaborate further. Next up we have Photon Sanctuary. Special summon two Photon tokens, Thunder Type Light, level 4, 2000 attack and 0 defense in defense position. And these tokens cannot be used as a synchro material monsters, and you cannot summon other monsters that turn you active this effect except white monsters. Token spawning is uh, very cute, you can use them for link plays and yeah, basically anything uh, other than synchro plays which is depressing, but it's alright. Uh, it you could have basically, uh, it also locks you into uh, light monsters which offer some spl splash ability in the deck since uh, uh, galaxies tend to have some light engines such as Honest or something. Next up we have Photon Hand. If you control a Photon or Galaxy monster, pay two 1000 life points and target one monster your opponent controls, take control of it. If you do not control a gal uh, Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon at activation, you can only target ex uh, an Xyz monster. You can only activate one Photon Hand per turn. Or not be a complete idiot and resort uh, to this uh, piece of garbage and just run Mind Control or Brain Control. It's much easier on, on, on your um, side of the field because it, there are, the cost is way uh, is uh, even less on the on the brain control and mind control has no cost to speak of so no. Next up we have Photon Veil. Shuffle three light monsters from your hand into the deck, then add one level three or, or level four uh, lower uh, or lower light monsters uh, from your deck to your hand. If you add two or more monsters, they must have the same name. It's it's basically a very specific searching effect which uh, for all things considered can uh, offer in some decent searching if you search a three of staple with it but you usually uh, the, the 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 thing about this card is actually completely vague if you haven't watched the anime and if you haven't seen the card known as photon lead which is a quick play that allows you to special summon a level four or lower light monster from your hand in face up attack position um uh, a spoiler warning for the uh, for the anime, the, those who haven't watched it. Kaito used both of these cards in order to search out three copies of Daybreaker and then special summon one of said Daybreakers, who has the effect that if it is and that if he is special summoned, he allows you to special summon another Daybreaker from your hand, with mind you no once per turn restrictions. So he summoned three Daybreakers with only two cards. Yeah, uh, there are certain uses these th uh, these things can. Uh, provide such a special summoning three galaxy wizards, but again, very specific targets are usually very uh, m much too vague for this thing to be a, a consistent swarm father. Speaking of cons uh, of the daybreaker, he's uh, he's on the next card here, known as photon booster. It allows you to target one level four or lower light monster on the field, except a token. The attack of all monsters currently on the field with its name become two thousand until the end of this turn. Mm, there are much better ways to make your opponent, they can make your monsters attack 2004 uh, applying effects and everything, but and this is certainly not the way. And yeah, we can see that Daybreaker is utterly disappointed. Why is the card that I am on the artwork of so piece of shit? All right, next up we have Photon's uh, Stream of Destruction. If you control a Galaxy Eyes monster, target one card on the field and banish it, and you can only activate this uh, card during your turn unless you control a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. It's basically a, um, a straight up better version of any form of spot removal in the game, since uh, it straight up banishes the, uh, the card upon being a quick play, so it targets, so I guess. Uh, you have to watch out for monsters which cannot be targeted, but this is the prime uh, way how you deal with problematic boss monsters, so yeah. Next up we have another quick play, Photon Trident. 
Target one face up photon monster you control until the end phase it gains 700 attack and if it attacks a defense position monster inflict piercing damage and when it inflicts battle damage to your opponent this turn you can target one spell or trap on the field, destroy it. Steltroid back row destruction is absolutely beautiful uh, cherry topper here and also the fact that it, I mean, it gives us 700 attack point boost which is alright but the piercing damage is not something to write home about since and uh, since most monsters nowadays don't have defense points so no next up we have galaxy zero target one photon or galaxy monster in your graveyard special summon it in, uh, in face up attack position and equip it with discard it cannot attack or activate its effects and if it would be destroyed uh, and during the end of the battle phase you can destroy this card instead when this card leaves the field the equipped monsters attack becomes zero you can only activate one galaxy zero per turn Man archetypal wants to reborn, well, more of a premature burial, but still, it's very much well, well worth running since uh, premature burial, uh, I don't think that, uh, yeah, premature burial is banned, but I'm not sure if it, yeah, it doesn't send the monster to the graveyard if it leaves the field, yeah, that's what I wanted to remember, so yeah, it's a good card and you basically run three of these. Next up we have Galaxy Expedition. If you control a level 5 or higher Photon or Galaxy Monster, special summon one level 5 or higher Photon or Galaxy Monster from your deck in face-up defense position and you can only activate one of these per turn. It's basically a free monster of however you look at it. It basically uh, enables rank 8 plays uh, if you summon uh, stuff like Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon or Galaxy Soldier onto the field. So yeah, good card. And the last card is Rank Up Magic Cypher Ascension, a quick play. It's basically the way you're using uh, you're using uh, this on Cipher Dragon in order to summon uh, n number uh, its Neo Galaxy Ice form. During either player's ma main phase, target one Cipher Exceed monster you control. Special summon from your extra deck one Cipher Exceed monster that is one rank higher than that target. By using that target as Exceed materials, the special summon is treated as an Exceed summon and transfer the Exceed materials. And it also gains this effect. The uh, this car card gains 500 attack for each level 4 or higher monster you control. Yeah, basically made to give uh, Neo Galaxy Eyes a severe attack point boost if you uh, 1500 extra attack points when you snag all three monsters uh, by detaching all three Xyz materials, which basically turns them into a 6000 attack beat stick, which is admirable. And since this archetype is all about power in their extra decks, so yeah, good card. Next up we have the trap cards, first of which is Cypher Bit. Target one Galaxy Eyes or Cypher Xyz monster you control, attach this card to it as an Xyz material, and if you do, the next time it would be destroyed by battle or card effect, the turn it is not destroyed. It's basically a better overlay region it's, instead of it's being a, it's a trap card which is a bit slower at the cost of giving us some protection instead of overlay region, just giving them a free overlay unit, so yeah. Uh, run by preference in my opinion. Next up we have Cypher Spectrum. If a Cypher Xyz monster you control that has an Xyz material is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard, target one of those monsters, special summon it if you do, a special summon one Xyz monster from your extra deck with the same name as that mon uh, that Xyz monster. It basically lets you, uh, uh, lets you summon an additional copy of the Xyz monster you revive with this effect which can also be pretty devastating and, can, uh, and you can also use stuff like a, a, like a Cypher, a, a Tranger and Cloud Dragon in order to give them an Xyz material. So yeah, it's, uh, it's an, uh, an alright card and again, it's a type of card you run by preference so I'm gonna let you decide on that. And the final Cypher card is Double Cypher. If your opponent controls a monster with the highest attack on the field, even if tied, target one the Galaxy Eyes or Cypher Xyz monster you control that has Xyz material, detach all Xyz materials from that Xyz monster, and if you do special summon one monster from your extra deck with the same name as that monster, uh, as the, that Xyz monster, sorry. Um, I guess uh, you can make this thing work, but I uh, believe Cypher Spectrum is a much better option here because, again, the, it's, these two are basically a different, a different flavor of a card, so I guess it's debatable which one you prefer, so I'm gonna let you decide on that one. Next up we have Eternal Galaxy. If you control a Photon or Galaxy monster, target one Xyz monster you control, special summon from your extra deck, one Photon or Galaxy Xyz monster that is four ranks higher than that, uh, that target. By using that target as material, this, uh, this is treated as an Xyz summon and transfer the materials and you can only activate one internal galaxy per turn. 
Um, you essentially use this in order to turn your rank 4s into rank 8 monsters. And that's about it. You can... Yeah, it can be useful. It, be, it can basically prove as a very nice disruption if you happen to have the appropriate setup for it. But, uh, but again, this is something that you don't run any more than one of. Next up, we have Photon Change, a continuous trap. Send this card to the graveyard uh, during the second standby phase after activation. You can only use the following effects of Photon Change once per turn. Send one Photon or Galaxy monster from uh, your control to the graveyard to activate one of these effects. If, uh, or if you send a Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon, you can activate both of these effects in sequence. Special summon one Photon monster from your deck with a different original name than the sent monster, or add one Photon card from your deck to your hand, except Photon Change. Um, the archetype already has enough tribute searching in form of um, again photon lizard or, and galaxy uh, photon lizard and galaxy li uh, wizards. <laughs> Try saying that uh, very fast without getting tongue wrapped, which makes this thing a very bricky and unsearchable and well, I believe yeah, it has photon in its name, so it's searchable by some uh, stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's still a very slow, since it's a trap card, so don't even think about running this, unless you're like really desperate for searching and you just run one for the flavor. Next up we have Photon Current. When a face-up light dragon type monster you control is targeted for an attack, the, at the attack target gains attack equal to the attacking monster's attack until the end of the damage step. Or you can just not be a complete freaking idiot and run Honest instead. It's, mu it's stackable and much more versatile. Next up we have Tachyon Transmigration, a counter trap. If you control a Galaxy Eyes monster, negate the activations of your opponent's spell or trap cards and monster effect activated before this in this chain. And if you do, shuffle the negated cards in, uh, on, on the field into the deck. If you control a Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon monster, you can activate this card from your hand. So, yeah, all things considered, this is a really freaking powerful negation effect. Not only can they negate absolutely everything in the chain, as long as you uh, chain this thing as a last card, but it also shuffles them into the deck, which um, basically avoids floating effect, uh, if there are any. And, yeah, it's a non-targeting, non-destruction removal, so, yeah, you can, it dodges some immunity effects as well. Yeah, if you, and if you happen to have a Tachyon Dragon, you get to activate this card from your hand, which is not going to happen often, so... Yeah, also it triggers on a Galaxy Eyes, any ga form of Galaxy Eyes monster, it can be even the main deck monster, so yeah. This thing is usually ran at 2, max. And next up we have Tachyon Chaos Hole. When a face-up Galaxy Xyz monster control is destroyed by battle with an opponent's attacking monster or by an opponent's card effect and sent to the graveyard, destroy as many face-up cards your opponent controls as possible, and if you do, banish them. During your draw phase, if, you, if this card is in your graveyard, instead of conducting your normal draw, you can banish this card and target one Galaxy Xyz monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Also, like uh, in Transmigration, it's not as grand, but it can be a pretty devastating form of removal because uh, when, when, uh, but it specifically needs to trigger off of Galaxy, uh, Galaxy Xyz monster getting destroyed, even Stealth Dragon. And yeah, you basically banish everything your opponent controls, which is a very powerful effect, uh, in my opinion. Also, you can exchange your draw phase in order to resummon a Galaxy Xyz monster from your graveyard, which is most probably going to be a powerful boss monster. So you tend to use this effect in the turn you know you're going to swing for game, because skipping your draw phase is usually a very one of the very costly effects you can pay. And their final card is Tachyon Galaxy Spiral. Target one ga dragon uh, galaxy monster you control until the end of this turn. It cannot be destroyed by battle. Also, it is unaffected by card effects except its own. If you control a galaxy ice tacky on dragon monster, you can activate this car card from your hand, and you can only activate one of these per turn. You basically turn your m monster to be indestructible for one turn. It can also be any mon uh, any galaxy monster. Even though you're most probably going to be using this on set bo on boss monsters, which are Xyz monsters, but in my opinion, an option is always nice if uh, if you uh, want to take it. So yeah. 
Oh boy, time for the consistency. In terms of, well, the general consistency, the archetype well, has enough searching capabilities inside and uh, and uh, the, that due to the fact that they're light monsters, they also have some minuscule uh, third-party support, so I'm gonna give them a generous 2 out of 3 in that regard. Power gets a 3 out of 3, w which is a bit generous. There is a uh, very high potential uh, to hit hard in the in this archetype, but I'm giving it a flat 3 out of 3 because... Uh, Neo Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon's effect, uh, multiple attacking effect used to be uh, a bit tricky to pull off uh, back in the day, but now with the existence of Dragon Phase, it's peace easy to uh, achieve it, and not to mention Draglubion uh, helps out with summoning him and by attaching the original Tachyon uh, to him as material. Combat gets also a 2 out of 3 because all, uh, it uh, relies on top decking on a very specific uh, dr draw or. Uh, recovery cards so that is a bit of a how should we say gamble if you're going to uh, get get the appropriate monster which you need at that moment to uh, perform any significant comebacks protection gets a uh, two out of three as well because uh, there there are a lot, a lot of traces of it and the deck can really go off and protect itself, uh, not to mention Tacky on Transmigration is a very powerful protection and negation tool. So, yeah, it's uh, I'm generous in this category just because Tacky on Transmigration exists. And as for the versatility, well, most of their, uh, their monsters are rank 8 in the extra deck and they're very splashable. And not to mention in some, uh, in some very versatile, uh, more versatile decks, they, they can be uh the final push some decks needed uh, need to in order to uh fin finish games and otk the hell out of you so i'm gonna be generous here and give them a three out of three in versatility and those were galaxies the galaxy sure is big and i, I wouldn't be surprised if the galaxy expands in form of the new support so yeah looking forward to it if that's the case which is like 99 percent possible and yeah next up the next time we'll be meeting uh, with the final zexal archetype that i'll be reviewing ever unless like all uh, some of the anime exclusive archetypes actually become a thing which is the utopia archetype yay now we're moving on to the main protagonist of zexal and after that i'll be reviewing the final arc 5 archetype which most of you should know what it is oh boy Thank you all so much for watching, stay tuned for more videos, walkthroughs and updates, comment, like and subscribe and as usual I'll upload the next vid whenever I can. See you all, have a good day and peace.